If you've seen Tolkien's Lord of the Rings or read the book, then Middle Earth probably looks something like this. It's cold, damp, and just that little bit spooky. And indeed, deep in the woods, something really big is stirring. It weighs over two and a half tons, is being seen increasingly often on American roads. And believe you me, this beast is virtually unstoppable. The Land Rover Defender is Britain's answer to the Jeep Wrangler. Like its American rival, the Defender has incredible Goni wearability, legions of fans and an iconic status that's tough to beat. But these days, the second generation Defender, which launched in 2020, is less about truck-like ride and utility appeal. This Go Anywhere SUV has become a safari chic urban machine with many of the comforts of a road-going limo. Styling naturally harks back to Land Rover's legendary heritage. However, it has been totally redesigned for the 21st century with modern driving aids, luxury comfort and a huge accessory list with everything your kids, dog or any outdoor crazy family will ever need. Building a follow-up to the original Land Rover was no mean feat. Apart from a softer street rise appeal, New Defender also had to prove it could mix it in the rough stuff. And to do that, they came here, to a wild corner of West England where every Land Rover since 1961 has been tested to the max. Behind me is Eastner Castle and I'm surrounded by 5,000 acres of prime British countryside. It's where Land Rover has come for the last 60 years to test every new vehicle. And we've come here to find out exactly why that is. Die-hard Land Rover fans cursed the day the original Defender died in 2016. Although this second generation model has morphed into a softer, more luxurious on-road machine, our time here at Middle Earth has proved that with air suspension, multiple cameras and technical wizardry, it still remains an absolute legend away from the asphalt. There's some brilliant rutted tracks to explore um, around this enormous course. And I've driven Land Rovers across Mongolia, Namibia, even the wilds of Los Angeles. And this is far and away the most demanding place to bring your 4x4. You'll find some wonderful names for the many different obstacles they've created on this course. There's Articulation Alley, Gearbox Hill and the Steps. They're not on the map, but they've all been created to test the suspension, wading ability, and sheer ruggedness of your Land Rover to the full. One of my favorite stories about this place is when King Hussein of Jordan decided he wanted to come to Eastner to try his hand on the off-road tracks. Land Rover teamed him up with former Formula One driver Jackie Stewart, who they thought would be a very safe pair of hands. Even the most experienced drivers take extra care when traversing steep side slopes. Obviously, things didn't go exactly to plan, and the pair got stuck here, at this place which has now become known as King Hussein's bomb hole. There are a couple of dozen instructors here at Eastner, but the top man, the chief instructor, the head honcho, is Roger Whitley, who's here with me today and has just been around the course with us several times. Roger, what on earth made you want to go out in cars and teach people who have no idea how to drive a four-wheel drive in the mud? Well, the first thing, I was a, a Land Rover geek. So okay. my, my first car at 17 was a Series 3 88 inch two and a quarter Land Rover. Are you still with us? Because some people won't know what that is. But, <laughs> but if you're a Land Rover nerd, you'll know exactly what that is. Basically, it's a car. And so, yeah, so I've really only owned Land Rovers. And then I managed to get a job teaching people to off, to off road. So what are the things they mostly get wrong when they're off roading? First thing is steering. Vital. So the balance in our heads make us steer the wrong way. So if you're on a slope and the car does that, we're going to steer uphill. So we need to match the tyres along the track. So we need to steer for the track, not to react to our, our, our balance. Is there a sort of off-road mantra, uh, you know, the, the basics of it? Is it, you know, slow, quick? Slow as possible, fast as necessary. 
is, yeah. is one of our man. And that normally works. <laughs> normally works, yeah. <laughs> and the new Defender, it's been out for a couple of years now, you've obviously driven it probably more than most people in the dirt. Um, how have you got on with it? Brilliant. I think it's an awesome bit of kit. I think the biggest thing for me is its on-road performance. That you can be off-road driving the same as the old Defender, but then you want to drive to a Scotland. Whereas the old Defender, you would struggle to drive that longer distance. And uh, vehicles get absolutely filthy out there. Uh, who gets the job of washing them afterwards? Uh, the instructors do the outsides and our valeter team do the insides. And does that apply to the chief instructor too? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I've got a car that's waiting outside now for me to clean. Okay, we better go and do it. <laughs>